Hello everyone, today is 21st of February, now it's 9 o'clock in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for the day in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. There are quite a few very significant developments and news that I like to share with you for this moment. And uh, well, I will start with a short summary of the situation on Ukrainian battlefield. Um, and uh, we have two uh, important uh, news for this moment. One is that Russian armed forces, um, according to some reports, uh, established control over the Pabeda settlement, <coughs> which is uh, on the southern side of Marinka, Donetsk sector of the front line. So this uh, small village is under Russian control, according to uh, reports, which is important because after establishing control over the Pabeda, as you can see on the map, now Mikhailovka settlement and uh, Paraskovivka settlement are um, ending up in, in kind of uh, operational encirclement, which might make it easier for Russian forces to advance in these directions and uh, force Ukrainian units to retreat. And also very important development is that uh, Russian armed forces finally, finally neutralized uh, foothold of Kyiv regime in uh, Krinky. I report about it uh, this morning. Uh, I report about it this morning, by the way. This is the Krinky village. And uh, well, this is the video. This is the video, by the way. That Russian airborne forces and uh, Marines finalized uh, this clearing operation in, in Krinky and settlement is, is under full Russian control now which is a uh, great news of course and uh, final end final point in this so-called Kherson offensive of uh, Kyiv regime uh, media operation for which uh, Kyiv regime Zelensky sacrificed at least two brigades if we combine losses that Ukrainian forces had in this direction in in last uh, two three four months period so yes Krinky is under full Russian control now. And uh, this so-called uh, Ukrainian Kherson offensive ended, as I was predicting from very beginning, disastrously for Ukrainian armed forces. Okay, this is it when it comes to short summary. If you are interested in more detailed uh, information, by the way, of course, military channels uh, will provide that detailed information in a great volume and I recommend those. Uh, I'll just add that Russian forces are continuing to increase pressure all along the front line and right now, right now, many military experts and channels are talking about possible or upcoming even Russian offensive in Zaporozhye sector of the front line towards Kamianske, towards Orekhov Bridgehead. It is possible, it is possible, but uh, if you ask me, me personally, think that uh, uh, after Avdeyevko, Russian forces probably or maybe will concentrate or shift their attention towards Seversk and surrounding areas. Uh, and also, also uh, Krasny Liman direction. But yet again, uh, general staff is not sharing with me information. I don't know. I can only have my own prediction like many other commentators do. Anyway, let's continue Ria Novosti's report that uh, head of Russian general staff, by the way, uh, General Gerasimov, awarded um, some militaries with some medals and ordens that were participating in Avdevka operation and, uh, and uh, shown themselves as a, as a brave and professional soldiers and officers. Uh, of course, uh, it is very important to acknowledge uh, bravery and professionalism of Russian uh, officers and militaries that were conducting this operation to liberate Avdevka. And same time, this information is important because uh, finally we have <laughs> we have information about Gerasimov. <coughs> As you know, for the last several months, rumors were generated by Kyiv regime, uh, Ukrainian propaganda outlets, Western propaganda outlets that Gerasimov was killed somewhere in, in Crimea during the one of the uh, strikes, missile strikes uh, of Kyiv regime. I was skeptical of this uh, information, 
I was asked several times uh, about it and uh, I, I did share my opinion that I was skeptical that Gerasimov was killed and I was right with my skepticism because he is uh, alive and well and uh, right now he's on uh, on line of contact and the wording or used to was on line of contact I don't know where he's right now but uh, he was on line of contact and awarded uh, Russian officers and soldiers with uh, with some medals and orders so I guess this topic is closed now uh, about Gerasimov. Uh, next information is from Ria Novosti also uh, about uh, Avdevka operation. And according to this news, dozens of uh, dozens of uh, military equipment was um, left behind by Ukrainian forces. Some some military equipment is damaged but can be repaired. Some military equipment is. Uh, in work in working conditions uh, and uh, well of course that military equipment will be removed from the city uh, western military equipment most likely will eventually end up in some museums as as military trophies uh, but soviet era military equipment can be uh, returned to the front line in uh, and and given to russian military personnel so Interesting news, interesting news that it's not just a huge number of uh, POWs that is on Ru in Russian custody now after the cooperation, but also a huge number of military equipment and munition and, and so on. And when it comes to POWs, by the way, New York Times did write about it. And uh, according to New York Times, hundreds and hundreds of uh, Ukrainian soldiers were left behind by chaotically retreating forces of uh, Ukrainian army from Avdeevka and uh, well this is interesting because of course we we knew about it I, I i did share many times information that hundreds of ukrainian soldiers end up being pow but it's interesting that new york times is acknowledging this western one of the biggest western propaganda outlets are acknowledging this uh, information and basically highlighting how disastrous this so-called organized regrouping of uh, Ukrainian forces was from uh, Avdevka. When it comes to POW, numbers of POWs uh, from Avdevka, I guess once Russian units will fin finalize this clearing operation and the mining process in Avdevka, we will receive some official statements from uh, Russian Defense Ministry about exact number. But it is uh, in hundreds, hundred percent. Some say it's eight hundred, some say thousand, some say more, some say less. Uh, I don't know, but it's definitely in hundreds. Probably from five hundred to thousand around that POWs from Avdevka. But anyway, let's continue. Artists report that uh, according to UN official, by the way, you might be surprised with this, and probably will be. But according to US UN official. Kiev has a right to demand return of draft dodgers. Unbelievable. Ukraine has a right to demand the return of the male refugees who are awaiting the draft. UN official uh, Philippe Leclerc has argued. He added that the military mobilization in Ukraine does not uh, constitute uh, persecution, uh, meaning uh, legal protection for uh, draftees can theoretically be rewarded uh, and well how can I comment this by the way I mean this uh, uh, degenerate is is a uh, official in the UN and makes this uh, stupid statement that uh, draft dodgers Ukrainian <laughs> draft dodgers not be prosecuted in Ukraine and theoretically they can have a, a, a legal protection how crazy is that? These draft dodgers, if they are back to Ukraine, it's it's kind of like that sentence for them. They will be mobilized and sent to the front line to die for Zelensky and his criminal associates or their Western masters. What this UN official is talking about? How inhuman he is, really, or ill-informed? I mean, I don't know, but I don't think UN. If, if UN wants to be respected or relevant organization, I don't think this type of individuals uh, can be accepted as officials. Man. This is a shame on UN. And uh, one, more, one more indicator that uh, UN is definitely a crap organization like many others 
that are affiliated with the UN are or are, are under full control of the Western ruling elites. What a shameless individual, man. He, he is arguing that uh, draft dodgers, Ukrainian draft dodgers, should, should go back to Ukraine and die then. Unbelievable. Artists report that uh, Polish farmers uh, blocking defense aid from uh, reaching Kiev, according to activists, uh, Ukrainian activists. Uh, well, information, if it's true, and if Polish farmers are blocking uh, defense military aid from NATO to Kiev regime, well, that's great news, man. I applaud Polish farmers for that. But in any case, in any case, uh, well, I'm in full support of... Uh, Farmers everywhere, in Poland, in uh, Czech Republic, in Denmark, Holland, Germany, France, Greek, Greece, everywhere, man. They have every right to protect themselves, their businesses, their uh, livelihood, the families, and, uh, well, let's hope they will, they will be successful in this uh, fight for their rights. And when it comes to the regime and their uh, and their uh, demands that uh, borders should be open and Ukrainian uh, low quality uh, rubbish basically uh, should be able to flood the EU markets, well, I mean, Zelensky and his criminal associates may demand whatever they want, but uh, but. But Polish farmers and, and farmers all around the Europe, definitely. And citizens, by the way, ordinary citizens have every right to have a choice, at least. Not to be forced to eat Ukrainian uh, garbage. That's it, really. And by the way, when it comes to quality, it is garbage. When it comes to quality, there is no quality control in Ukraine. What you are talking about, it's a garbage. That's why it's so cheap. You think why it's so cheap, these Ukrainian goods? Not just the grain, but just about everything. Because it's garbage. And you are forced to eat that garbage. And you may not, don't even knew that garbage came from. Because you're not going to have on the packaging that. Anyway, I'm in full support of farmers. Uh, EU regime will be neutralized fairly soon. Uh, Russia will return uh, control over the historical land, over its historical land, and then goods that will be produced on that land uh, will be high quality, without uh, GMO and the uh, rest of the crop. And uh, well, if if EU countries will will want to buy these goods, okay, but. Uh, I don't think relationships between Russia and the EU will uh, normalize anytime soon in the next 10 or 20 years. So uh, all goods that will be produced in, uh, in Russia, inclu including Western Russia, uh, Malarosia territory from uh, Kharkov to Odessa and, uh, and the rest of the territory, by the way, that is historically Russian. All that goods will be, will be exported to the rest of the world. Russia is already main breadbasket for this world and uh, will remain as such for uh, forever. TASS news agencies report that uh, in Sweden, oh, this is, uh, this is interesting, head of Swedish armed forces, uh, General Ioni Lindrofs <laughs> made a statement that Swedish army is unable now to uh, refurnish its uh, its um, military equipment its units basically with military equipment and munition because uh, of so much stuff have have been sent to Kyiv regime so basically this uh, general is saying that sweden swedish government effectively demilitarized itself <laughs> which is uh, okay which is interesting what you gonna say about it by the way it seems like Russian special military operation is demilitarizing not just the uh, Kyiv regime but uh, entire NATO, <laughs> because uh, Sweden is is uh, almost a member of NATO. It's just for formalization is left. Uh, just a few days ago, 
are reportable statements from Denmark that the Danish government is planning to uh, send all its artillery and munition to Kyiv regime. Baltic states already demilitarized themselves. They never had any really capable for of anything militaries, but whatever they had, they sent it to the regime. Slovakia, by the way, NATO member state, uh, previous government of Slovakia also demilitarized Slovakia and the new defense minister openly said that country has no defense means right now because of so much weapons have been sent to to Kyiv and um, well process continues by the way process continues what uh, what a craziness and uh, I mean I'm for unfortunately not no one can influence this this process it seems like because Western ruling elites uh, are unchallenged you know it is what it is also interesting news that US plans to train 12 uh, pilots 12 ukrainian pilots for uh, f-16s in 2024 topic of f-16 is constantly in the media in the west and uh, in the russia also this is for example interfax uh, news agencies reporting about it and well um, i guess for this moment everybody is tired with this topic uh, f-16s and uh, i don't think many people really care uh, will f-16s appear in the skies over the uh, the so-called Ukraine or not? Um, let's see. Let's see. For Russian fighter jets, for Russian air defense systems, it not really makes any difference. They have to shut down MiG-29 or F-16. But uh, strategically speaking, F-16s are capable of uh, carrying nuclear weapons, Western nuclear weapons, and in that sense. Uh, when F-16s will arrive on the front line or some uh, really long-range missiles uh, like 500 kilometers and more well Moscow may react on such a development in uh, in some extreme terms exactly because those weapons are capable of um, weapon systems are capable of carrying nuclear weapons and how Russian general staff uh, will know what kind of uh, warhead in, in or what kind of munition F-16s are carrying or, or long-range missiles. So it's, it's a strategic threat to Russia and Moscow will be forced to respond on, on that kind of development. But let's see what will happen. Also, information from Interfax. Um, US uh, administration provided information to its allies about uh, about alleged uh, um, decisions of Moscow to put some nuclear weapons in the in the space um, as you know a few days ago US uh, officials come up with this uh, fake story that Russia is planning to put some nukes in the space they are trying to create generate some additional uh, russophobic anti-Russian wave by claiming that Russia is uh, militarizing, not just militarizing space, but also plans, planning to put some nukes in the, in the space, uh, which is not true, by the way. And uh, we have a statement from Russia. Uh, Russian president uh, commented on it. Uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, Russia has no, de not deployed nuclear weapons in space and does not intend to do so. President Vladimir Putin and Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu said on uh, a Tuesday. So this is the answer from Moscow that Russia did not put any nukes in the space and has no such a desire. But by the way, by uh, by escalating this topic, by uh, by further pushing this narrative, uh, of course, Western uh, militaries, Western ruling class, uh, they are. Uh, they are basically preparing ground for uh, plans that they have about militarization of their space. And they're going to say, you know what, Russia already has nukes in the space. Let's let us to also did it. Let's let let us give us more funds. So we will put some nukes on the space also. That's what is going on here. And same time, they will uh, you know additionally demonize Russia. But at this point, <coughs> I guess 
this further demonization don't really has any point because majority of society in the West already are Russophobes. They already are believing that uh, Russians, I mean, we here are sleeping and dreaming how we're going to attack everybody in the West. Uh, and the well-informed uh, part of societies in the West know perfectly well that we are peaceful people. We don't give a damn about wars and stuff. We don't dream about wars. We don't war wars. Uh, we want exactly the opposite. Peace and peaceful development. That's it. And uh, that's why this feather, no matter how far Western ruling is going to push this anti-Russian hysteria, I guess they already achieved maximum that they could. And majority in the West, unfortunately, well, believe their propaganda and probably are quite sure that we are some kind of, I don't know, monsters that only think about wars. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's sad, but it is what it is, man. Propaganda is a powerful tool in hands of uh, so-called elites. Let's continue. And yes, I already said that Putin and Shoigu, they discussed this hysteria in the, in the West about Russian nukes in space. And they said that we don't have a nukes in space. We don't plan to do so, to put some nukes in the space. But if US does, by the way, and US probably does, that's why they are uh, pushing this narrative then. Well, not just Moscow, but also Beijing, New Delhi will be forced to do the same. That's how it is, really. Let's continue. And the TASS news agencies report that, um, well, Pentagon spokesman made a statement that uh, without, without US support, Kiev uh, has to decide on its own which cities should it uh, on the line of contact with which cities and settlements should Ukrainian forces hold on to uh, and which not. Uh, so <laughs> quite interesting uh, statement. Um, somewhat uh, you know, attempt, a weak attempt of Pentagon to, to somewhat distance themselves from, uh, from this Ukrainian mess that they provoke. Because, you know, now they're saying, you know what, let them decide to what uh, cities or, or settlements they're going to fight and uh, for what uh, settlements they don't. Of course, these comments were made uh, in regards to Avdevka retreat. Although, after Avdevka, Ukrainian forces already lost a couple of settlements also. Anyway, let's continue. TASS news agencies report that uh, Lavrov, and by the way, even if US will send all its military equipment to Kyiv regime, with the exception of nukes, uh, Kyiv regime will lose anyway. This is illusion that have been created by Western uh, ruling elites that more weapons will somehow uh, change the tide. No, it's impossible. It's just simply impossible. More weapons means further prolongation of this conflict but uh, russia already won this this uh, war against western uh, ruling elites undeclared war by western ruling elites against russia russia already is victorious it's just formalization is uh, left Anyway, let's continue. TASS news agencies report that Lavrov uh, arrived in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil to participate in a, in a meeting of uh, heads of foreign ministries of G20 countries. Before that, before arriving in uh, Brazil, of course, uh, Lavrov was in Venezuela and uh, also in uh, Cuba with working visits. Um, well, interesting, man. Lavrov is one of the heavyweights uh, on the world stage right now, undoubtedly. And uh, together with uh, with India's foreign minister, most likely, uh, I mean, legendary foreign ministers, one may say at this point. Um, I don't think uh, there are some other foreign ministers on on same same scale, same same. Uh, level but uh, anyway anyway let's continue interfax is reporting that um, eu by the way prolonged anti-russian sanctions until 24th of february 2025 okay 
Uh, okay, we did not care about EU sanctions uh, before now, and we will not care about EU sanctions after now. It's only EU officials that are living in this uh, delusional world, this bubble, that <laughs> those sanctions are uh, gonna destroy Russia or influence somehow Russian citizens to rebel against government and that kind of stuff. Man. I mean, what, what delusional people those EU officials are, really? anyway uh, next news is also quite interesting um, eu candidate country reje rejects demands to sanction russia and you guessed about which country i'm talking about uh, georgia by the way so official policy will continue to resist the calls to impose sanctions on russia georgian prime minister irakli kobahidze said on tuesday policy previously uh, declined to join uh, many western countries in adopting restrictions aimed at Moscow, citing security concerns. Kobahidze made his um, recent comments during the meeting with the EU's top diplomat Joseph Borrell in Brussels. I mean, this guy has some balls, man. <laughs> he, he said this in, in, in straight in the face to Borrell. Uh, and this guy is a new prime minister. I mean, previous one also was uh, very strict when it comes to, very direct when it comes to uh these demands from the west to to sacrifice georgia by uh, escalating with russia uh he uh, previous uh prime minister was uh, quite effective to protect georgia from this western uh, destructive influence and this new one may turn out to be even more direct and even even more uh principle when it comes to um, these uh, Western attempts and Ukrainian attempts, by the way, to use Georgia as a kind of second front against Russia. So Kobachiza made his uh, recent statements, I already said, in face to uh, Joseph Borrell in Brussels. These statements were very uh, regrettable <laughs> and the Prime Minister Ah, Kobachidze made his uh, recent comments during the meeting with the EU's top uh, diplomat Joseph Borrell in Brussels. He was asked by reporters about demands from Kiev to open a second front against Russia. And he also answered to that question that these statements from Kiev were very uh, regrettable. Uh, and he stressed that Georgia is um, providing strong political support for Ukraine and it's uh, sending humanitarian aid to Kiev. As for the sanctions, we have a very clear position on this matter. We are not imposing sanctions and we have strong argument for uh, doing so. Kobachidze explained, adding that Tbilisi will not be used to uh, circumvent uh, the third party restrictions uh, placed on uh, Moscow. And, uh, well, it's regrettable that Tbilisi is uh, still at least uh, formally making statements that they are supporting politically Kyiv. Why you are supporting Kyiv, by the way, even politically? They are your enemies. They openly, high-ranking officials from Kyiv regime, openly demanded Second Front to be open in Georgia. They were openly sending terrorists and um, mercenaries to Georgia to destabilize the situation. And they're, what you are supporting? There is no such state as Ukraine. No. That's it. And it's not, not necessary to play these nonsense games that, you know, Ukraine, Ukraine. What Ukraine, man? This artificial quasi-state was created by Lenin and communists. It never existed and will never exist after this conflict will end. And, uh, well, Poland wants to retake its own historical land. Okay. Let them do so. Hungary wants to reclaim its territory. Transcarpathy, okay. Romania wants to do it, okay. We don't care, but Russia will retake control over the East land that was gifted to these so-called Ukrainians that forgot that they are Russians, by the way. They, they were under, after decades and decades of this uh, crazy propaganda, they really start believing that they are no Russians. And it's just crazy, by the way. If you, uh, I'm quite sure, if you if you start uh, pushing, uh, putting people in, uh, let's say, in 
I don't know, in any of the province of Germany, for example, in Bavaria, if you start talking, giving these people this propaganda that Bavarian, so they are not Germans, they are not Germans, they are not Germans. After decades and decades of this crazy propaganda, some people will start believing in Bavaria that they are not Germans. That's how propaganda works. But that would not be factual, isn't it? Because Bavarians, they are Germans, like any others. That's what happened with Ukrainians. And the uh, ones that are thinking that they are not part of Russian world, they are not Russian, they are delusional. They are delusional, poorly educated people. That's all it is. And this is not me saying, this is history is saying, by the way. Real history. Anyway, anyway, I am little disappointed that Pilisi has no guts yet to say, you know what, we don't give a damn about Ukraine. Just leave us alone. Uh, but someday, maybe someday, because uh, as I said, man, once this conflict will end, there will be no this nonsense on the name of Ukraine as a state. That territory has historical name, Novorossiya, and will maybe exist as Novorossiya inside the Russia, as a part of Russia. But Ukraine as a state, no. There will be none after this conflict. That's it, man. Artists report here that uh, Russian church blasts Vatican uh, over gay blessings. Well, that's quite interesting also. So Vatican's recent uh, decision to permit the blessings of uh, same-sex couples is a gross deviation from the Christian faith. The Russian Orthodox Church has uh, stated According to the statement published on the church's website, Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, head of Russian Orthodox Church, has uh, asked the synod Synodal uh, Biblical and uh, Theological Commission to analyze the document adopted by the Vatican in December 2023. The commission met on uh, a Tuesday and uh, unanimously, unanimously agreed that this Novelty represents a drastic departure from Christian moral teachings, the statement uh, read. Kirill said in the past that the Russian Orthodox Church will never endorse same-sex marriages and has condemned the dangerous and destructive LGBT ideology. The Church views are consistent with the position of the Russian authorities, which in December 22, uh, 2022 vastly ex expanded the existing ban on LGBT uh, propaganda. So, yes, that's the position of Russian Orthodox Church, uh, position that I'm in full support of. Uh, I was baptized in Georgian Orthodox Church, uh, so, so I'm, I'm part of Georgian Orthodox Church, but Russian and Georgian Orthodox Churches are sister churches. And... Uh, uh, and Georgian Orthodox Church has uh, exactly the same position, by the way. It's only in Greece, by the way, that this... Uh, uh, in Orthodox world, only Greece adopted this, uh, this same-sex uh, marriages. Although, by the way, Greek Orthodox Church was also against this. But uh, local governments did not listen to opinion of the uh, religious leaders. And I, I believe majority in Greece, majority in society are also against this uh, kind of stuff, but um, they were ignored also by Greek government. But the rest of the Orthodox world is uh, quite clear on this topic. Um, and well, this news uh, will be received uh, positively in, in, in Orthodox world, uh, I believe. And no one expected anything else, of course. And, uh, well, RT is reporting the Chinese competitor to Boeing and Airbus makes international debut. Uh, I mentioned this news in yesterday's headlines. Um, China's homegrown passenger jet, the uh, C919, made its uh, inaugural flight outside China on the Sunday at the Singapore Air Show. The earlier, uh, the airline which uh, took the skies for its first um, 
airliner who took this guys uh, for the first commercial flight in May has so far only been authorized to fly in its home country. Um, well, this plane is capable of carrying up to 192 passengers and uh, uh, for uh, 5,644 kilometers uh, mid-range, mid-range plane. Um, well, it's a big deal, big deal to develop uh, domestically airliner. Of course, there's only few countries in this world that are capable to do so. But when it comes to be competitor to the Boeing and uh, Airbus, um, well, it's too early to call this, uh, obviously, because Airbus and uh, and uh, and Boeing they are monopolies basically. They only have competition between each other at this point. But China's domestic market is uh, immense, of course, and uh, if Chinese companies will start buying these planes, well, that will be enough for this company, for producer company, to to further develop uh, uh, these planes and other planes. And uh, little by little, in, in, in 10, 15, maybe 20 years time, get a worldwide recognition. And same goes for Russian planes, by the way. Russia, of course, also producing uh, MS-21 or Superjet passenger planes works uh, are to uh, mass produce wide uh, fuselage uh, il-96 400 planes uh, i believe um, and but yet again to become a real competitor with to boeing and airbus uh, it, it takes it takes decades it's not gonna be easy man that's for sure although by the way boeing is in a, in a quite a, uh, shallow waters right now because of the decrease significant decrease in uh, in quality of the Boeing uh, products, Boeing planes, uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if Boeing will just fall apart on its own. But when it comes to Airbus, they are they are you know in a strong positions undoubtedly. And I will end this. Uh, I will end this uh, update now with this news. In 2023, by the way, 86% of Russian oil exports went to friendly, friendly nations, which is uh, good news, which is good news. And of course, by the way, these friendly nations, they did not uh, use all, all this uh, huge volume of oil uh, from Russia. They resale this oil to third countries and <laughs> who do those third countries are Western Western states, isn't it? EU member states, uh, even US, by the way, buys Russian oil, uh, sometimes directly, sometimes uh, through third parties. And uh, well, the difference is that, uh, well, Russia is making money, uh, Russian friends making money, and uh, Western states are paying more, <laughs> basically, because they are buying not directly from Russia, but from the third and sometimes fourth parties uh, so it is what it is it is what it is the western ruling elites bring this to the western world uh, and uh, i mean what are you gonna do about it you know it's 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 sad it's sad that world is divided now one side is the west and the other side is the rest of us the entire world but uh it is what it is, what you're gonna do, really. I will end, uh, I will end uh, this video now. Relatively short update, and hopefully you will, you will find this um, update interesting, and if so, please click that like button, leave some commentary about uh, any topic you like, and share video with your friends. And if you think this um, channel this uh, media project of mine with several channels several programs is interesting useful uh, and deserves informative and deserves to exist please consider to support my work with small donations through paypal buy me a coffee or by subscribing to my patreon page links are in the description box uh, or in the pinned um, comment have a great day and take care